The author Charles Bukowski once said, The difference between a democracy and a dictatorship is in a democracy you vote first and take orders later. In a dictatorship you don't have to waste your time voting. As everyone who's gone to school in a democracy knows, there are fundamental differences between democracy and dictatorship. A democracy has free and competitive elections. Well, so there's one fundamental difference. Other than that, there are numerous similarities, too. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. I'm a political science student, and I think it's funny how much time we spent in poli-sci class talking about the different structures of states around the world. The structure of modern states is actually pretty similar everywhere. You've got the people who do violence to their subjects, which is integral to all states, like the police and the military, and nowadays nearly all states have both along with an intelligence agency. Some states have more than one intelligence agency. That's a sign of how important secrecy and violence are to that state. There's other security agencies too, like military police, or local and federal police, and there are security cameras everywhere. like in the UK, or in the US. This article says there are an estimated 30 million surveillance cameras in the US, and it's from 10 years ago. And the state outsources a lot to the private sector. So we have private security, who of course ultimately rely on the police and private military firms, who are basically mercenaries. And these things all expand the power of the state further. But beyond the agencies responsible for direct violence are the agencies of policy. States haven't always had policies for everything under the sun. For most of their existence, states were content to collect taxes from people, in whatever form that was like a food surplus, money once states invented money and made their subjects use it, plus maybe some annual tribute or something. In most cases it was probably indistinguishable from slavery or feudalism. But the norms of how a state functions spread, and since the end of World War II and decolonization, states have come to adopt all kinds of new functions and put far bigger resources towards old ones. It was considered the duty of the state to educate children, to run hospitals, build highways, and water supplies, and electricity. Governments run post offices, subways, airports, and sometimes street cleaners. They have laws governing every activity you could think of which means your freedom to do any activity you could think of is in the hands of people who make and enforce the law. States all take taxes from people with, by whichever means they can, from income tax to sales tax to tariffs, so they all have enormous amounts of money at their disposal, and yet nearly all of them spend more than they tax. So they run huge deficits that will, of course, mean higher taxes in the future, but it's considered normal and most people don't even call them on it. So republic or monarchy, states look pretty similar nowadays. Dictatorships crack down on their people for expressing themselves publicly. And we live in a free country, right? So it could never happen here. Let me ask you this. Has there ever been a G8 summit in your country, or a G20 maybe? Let me guess. A few people out of the tens of thousands of protesters broke some windows and rows upon rows of riot police came in spraying, beating, and arresting. Peaceful protesters get arrested all the time in places like the US, the UK, and Canada. 
There's tons of examples, so instead of just giving you all of them, why don't you Google it yourself? Just Google peaceful protesters arrested, or um, while you're at it, maybe try Googling police agent or agent provocateur. There's a lot of examples of that, too. How could the police be so violent? I thought this was a free country. Because, dictatorship or democracy alike, the police are there to serve the elites, not to protect the people. Free country? That's propaganda talking. Dictatorships also have the habit of jailing huge numbers of people. When so-called democratic governments are under pressure from companies that run prisons, they have an incentive to do the same. And locking people up is as easy as passing a law. If it's illegal to sell or smoke cannabis, you can go to jail for it. Look at the millions of people in the U.S. who have. But why? It's just a plant. But criminalizing it benefits prison operators, prison guard unions, the police, the alcohol and tobacco industries, the drug testing industry, Ooh, and drug traffickers only exist because drugs are illegal. The U.S. locks up more than any of the world's dictatorships. And people in jail are not free. Just ask Chelsea Manning, Julian Assange, Edward Snowden. Ask people in CIA black sites around the world. Something else you might want to Google. Ask the however many people are still in Guantanamo Bay prison and who, despite centuries of legal tradition, have no right to habeas corpus. I've been told all my life that citizens of a democracy have rights. It's on a piece of paper, so it must be true. If rights were the difference between democracy and dictatorship, does that mean democracy is dead? Dictatorships run secret agencies to find and neutralize enemies of the state. Again, it could not possibly happen here, right? Well, think about it. Have there been any new anti-terrorism laws introduced in the past 20 years? And have you taken a good look at those laws? Most people won't become targets, that's true. But that's true about author authoritarian regimes, too. Most people who keep their heads down will be spared direct state violence. That doesn't mean those laws aren't draconian. What do the laws say? Could intelligence agencies be reading your emails and text messages? Maybe. Could they be listening to your phone calls? Could they be forcing Google to take down embarrassing videos and give them your information? Yes, of course. This is all well documented, so you don't need to even just look at these headlines that I've showed you. Look it up for yourself. The police can put innocent people, including children, into databases and track them without any reason. The cliché that if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear, is obviously not true. <clears throat> Clearly, we are no longer presumed innocent, if we ever were. In fact, just recently, newspapers revealed that the biometric data that they collect on us at borders just got hacked. Stolen by hackers. So they take your biometric information, maybe give it to their corporate friends, I mean, they don't care about you or your data and how valuable it is, so they have shit security covering it, and now whoever wants it can have it. Those of you making excuses for your rulers, approving of restrictive measures because you're afraid of terrorism or crime or whatever you're afraid of, saying they should have all of your data, you're letting this happen. 
It's time to start saying no to these endless assaults on your freedom, or else just admit that you don't care about freedom. Then there's the people who say a so-called democratic state is what holds back rule by dictators. But really, any state could fall under the rule of someone with dictatorial or maybe fascist tendencies, and under the right conditions, they can take absolute power. Often that happens when there's mass unrest. Even if no one's asking for a strong leader to step in and take over, it could still happen at any time. It just takes one election, maybe one paid for by a few rich people, or just of someone with the right rhetoric and charm, and they're in charge of the government. I used to not really buy the argument that Hitler was democratically elected as an argument against democracy, but I get it now. See, I pointed out that the election that handed Hitler the chancellorship couldn't really be called democratic by current international standards because there was all this intimidation of political opponents and open street fighting between Nazis and leftists. But to argue that way would be to miss the bigger point. However democratic the election was or wasn't, the result was accepted. One party won a plurality of the vote in one election, and naturally, it was considered legitimate. <clears throat> I wonder how many people at the time said, well, democracy might not be perfect, but it's the best system we have. What the people should have done, I can say, with the benefit of hindsight, is refuse to recognize the result of the election, gone on strike, Shut things down. I bet if a third of workers in any given country went on strike, they could demand just about anything. Students could have gone on strike too, refusing outright to go to university under a state they didn't recognize. They could have stood arm in arm with workers against the police. Or maybe instead of an election, there's a coup. It could be as simple as one decision by a general, maybe funded by the CIA, maybe his own idea, and now a dictator's in the saddle. They really only need the support of enough people either with influence, like rich and connected people, uh, high-ranking state officials, and control of the means of violence, which means the loyalty of enough elements of the military, the police, maybe the intelligence agencies. As I explained in my first video on the political compass, authoritarianism is a matter of degree. When a dictator takes over, of course it's worse than under the previous government because they step up the violence in order to silence their opponents. But the means to carry out the caging and killing of political opponents were just lying around for anyone to use. They're just being used more now. And now there's a danger that democracies will slide into dictatorship. Maybe, again, mass unrest, and I don't mean peaceful protest, but unrest, could happen as people realize the capitalist state is the root of their problems. Maybe government debt and taxes will get out of control. States will get ever more oppressive and intrusive and violent. People who aren't scared enough will do something about it. At the same time, though, there will be a group of people scared into submission, afraid of the devil they don't know. That means not just the elites who benefit from the status quo, but people on the bottom who think that things could be a lot worse. Those people would lend their support to stronger government, under the banner of stability and promises to get the economy back on track. Don't let it happen. Don't let them take away all your freedom. Fight back against authoritarianism however you can. <sighs> Do your best. <laughs> My last video in this series on democracy will be out next week, and I'll be talking about the alternative to the undemocratic state. See you then.